Welcome to this tutorial. This updated chromatic tutorial will be showing you how to make a chromatic and also make a sound font out of it. Alright, so first thing you're going to do is you're going to have to record some samples. I would normally do this in Audacity, but because I have FL readily convenient to me, I'm going to do it right inside FL. Uh, uh, ba -ba. Just going to turn, turn up the gain, gain a little bit on my voice. voice. Okay. okay. Next, you're going to record some vowels. Uh, there. So now we have it done and good. Next what we're going to do is we're going to hold control, left click and drag and select our sample. And then you're going to do the shortcut control B two times. You're going to hold continue holding down control and select all those uh, audio clips there and then do control B two more times so that we now have 36 samples. All right. Next what you're going to do is you're going to right click on track 1 and then do consolidate track. What this will do is it'll render out all of what you have here into one single audio file. Notice how the ah is bigger than everything else. We're going to fix that later. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to click on the little audio icon up in the top left, this thing right here. You're going to click on it and then click on pitch correct sample. Now, our stuff is a little messy right now. We can easily fix that. Uh, although it might take a bit of time. First, what you're going to do is you're going to go up to these knobs in the top right, and you're going to turn up the center one all the way. You're going to turn the variation all the way down, and you're going to turn the transition all the way down. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to join these samples together, and this can be done very easily. You just need to press C to activate cut mode. You can see how this icon lights up over here. And then you're going to hold down Control and hover over the note. You'll see that your cursor turns into this pointer finger. You're going to click on the two samples that you want to join together, and just click on both to join them together. And I'm just going to do this for the rest of the samples. Okay, and once you're done with that, um, you're going to take uh, the first 12 samples here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, and you're going to drag Ooh, them down, e uh, down to this lower octave here. So you're going to put the first note onto C3 by going over the middle of the note, clicking, and uh, you're going to make that sure that first note is on C3, and then we're just going to put every note after on uh, an one note up. E the same thing for this shit. Now, if we were using the full version of FL Studio, what you could do with this is you could click on this third button here in the second group, and you could click on it, and you'd be able to drag it out into the playlist. But, oh. Uh, e it's not tuned. It's, it's not doing that for me because I'm on the trial version. Oh my god, I'm on the trial version of FL Studio. And that means I can't save my chromatic either. How will I ever be able to get past this? Well, uh, in the mixer, which you can open up by pressing F9, um, in slot 2 on the master track, right underneath New Tone, you would click on slot 2 and you would go down to Edison. You'd click on that, and the, we have Edison loaded up. Now what we can do with this is that we can record the audio from New Tone into Edison. So I'm going to go back into New Tone. I'm going to press up the top here and put the playhead at the beginning. Next in Edison, I'm going to click the record button, and then I'm going to play my chromatic out. Depending on how long it is, it take a while. Now we have all of our samples. Now what we can do with Edison is that we can click on this top right button here, the very top most, top right most one. Click on it, click hold, and drag it out into the playlist. And now we have our chromatic. <laughs> now what we need to do with this is that we need to double click on the sample, which opens up the audio clip window. And we're going to go up to the top right where it says track, and you're going to scroll up on it by one, or click inside of it, hold, and drag up until it says one. We're going to go over to insert one. In our mixer, in slot one, we're going to load up the plugin Fruity Pear Magic EQ2. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to apply a high pass to this, which is going to let all the high frequencies through, but completely cut out wherever uh, all the low ones, wherever we set the cutoff. So I'll show what I mean. 
on band one here, this very most left band, you're going to right click on it, go down to type, and then select the high pass option. And that turns our curve into this. Next, we're going to go up to the right here where these colorful things are. You notice these dots here? These control the steepness of the curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down on the dot there. I'm going to drag down until we have a much, much steeper curve here. I'm just going to drag this over to so that the bottom of this line is over at like the 100 mark. Uh, e now, well, the reason why we're doing this is to get rid of all those lower frequencies to, as to not interfere with the rest of our song. It'll also make the chromatic come off as a bit clearer in general, which can also be helped by giving this a little bit of a boost in the treble section. So just click on band 7 and give it a bit of a boost. Uh, e -oo -a -a -e awesome. Next, on slot 2, we're going to load up Fruity Compressor. A compressor essentially makes all of this the same size. It's not exactly like that, but that's the best way I can describe it. It can it just automatically levels out the volume, which is useful because we have this very loud vowel and then everything else is quieter. So I'm going to turn up the ratio, which is like the power of the compressor. I'm going to turn it up to 3 to 1. And I'm going to turn down the threshold. This is where the compression activates that. So I'm going to drag it down to like 20 dB. Uh, e and I can adjust it further. Uh, e eh. I'm also going to turn the attack all the way down because we want the compressor to hit in immediately without any uh, delay time. And then I'm going to turn up the gain volume a little bit because the compressing action got rid of some of the volume. Uh, e ooh, eh. Uh, e ooh, eh. Uh, now it's all the same size and, and volume and we're good. So now I'm going to right click on track one again. I'm going to consolidate the tracks. You can see now if you compare these two how the ah uh sound is now the similar size compared to everything else. Whereas before it was much bigger and much louder. Okay, getting rid of that one. We can now actually do something with this. So I'm going to double click on this. Right. And then I'm going to go up to the channel rack, which you can open up by pressing this button or pressing F6. And I'm going to add in the plugin SliceX, which is this plugin, which is an audio slicing plugin, which we can slice up our chromatic with and play in the piano roll. Um, so whenever you make a new chromatic scale and stuff, you will have this pesky little auto dump button be on. Uh, turn that off, because if you don't, it's going to dump out everything that you have in here on the piano roll placing your current pattern which is what you do not want because you don't want it to potentially replace some of the stuff in your pattern every time you make some changes to the scale so i'm going to drag uh, the e over into slice X. Eh. and then i'm going to click this flag icon fifth from the left I'm going to go down to auto slice. I'm going to click on doll auto slicing. Again, I'm clicking on the flag up here, going down to auto slice and clicking on doll auto slicing. Now, it might not work 100%, uh, as you can see here, as uh, there is uh, some fucked up stuff, but that's okay because we can very easily remedy that. Um, I actually have an extra marker here that I can just drag over. So I'm going to click on this marker. I'm going to drag it over here to my other sample. Uh, e and then I'm just going to get rid of the audio before that. So, and then these markers here are ones that I do not want, so I'm just going to right click them and then click on delete. And I'm just going to touch up the rest of this chromatic. Again, a um, good way to test out if the slice is good or not. If you like spam it a bit and you don't hear a definite note, there's like a lot of a noise beforehand, then you know that you need to move the slice further into the sample. There, now you have a proper note. Just gonna get rid of all that beforehand, and I'm just gonna continue on and clean up the rest of the chromatic. If you need to add in a marker, you can click on this button up here, which adds in a flag.
All right, my chromatic scale is done. If you did the 12 samples, the last marker should read marker number 36, and it should end on B5. Uh. Awesome. So now you can just use this inside of FL if you, as you please. So you can just leave it here, but we're going to make a sound file out of it. So you're going to click on the save icon. You're going to go down to export regions for sampler use. You're going to click on that. And then you're going to navigate over to whatever folder you're going to have them in. Um, I made this folder here. And you're just going to name the sample to something shorter. And then it exports every region here. And the benefit of doing this is that it will save us a lot of work. So we're going to open up Polyphone, which is our free sound font maker program. I'll put a link in the description for that. We're going to click on the new sound font button. We're going to name it, whatever. We're going to put the author as you, current date, date. This is not at all necessary. I just do it. Um, then we're going to click on this sample icon and import all of our samples by clicking on the first one, holding shift, and clicking on the last one, which will select all the samples. All right. I didn't get the message this time, but you might. Um, if a window pops up saying like, oh, there's found a duplicate of something, blah, 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 and it has like a bunch of options to choose from, choose the option duplicate all. All right. Uh, then it'll just do the thing right. Now, if you wanted to go out of your way and loop your samples for whatever reason, I'm not really going to because this is a shorter sound font, like shorter sample. Uh, uh. But I could zoom in on somewhere that would sound good uh, by holding right click and dragging. I can pan by holding left click and dragging. You see these peaks? I normally try to find the tallest peak here, and then I left click inside of it. That will set our starting loop point. And then I'm going to scroll over and find a similar loop point, a similar point, right click, put that there, and I'm going to test it out. Uh... Mm, not very good. You're going to bring it a little bit closer. Uh... Okay, that sounds decent enough. And then I'm going to go down to the information down here at the bottom left. Uh, in the loop section, I'm going to highlight the point number, control C to copy it, go over to the right sample, paste it there, and do the same thing with the endpoint so that our loop points are the same. Uh... If you don't do this, it's going to sound very weird. Uh... So, do that. But I'm not going to loop the scale. So next, what we need to do is we need to click on the first sample here, go down to the bottom, hold shift, click on the last sample, and then click on the speaker icon up in the top left to make an uh, a new instrument. Next, we are greeted with the sprite with the spreadsheet. Uh, don't get intimidated. This is just a simple process. What we're going to do? See this sample root key down here at the bottom. We're going to set the key range up here, which is like where it'll play on the piano, to that sample root. So it's going to be starting out on 60. And since we have duplicate samples for the left and right ear, two of the samples are going to have to be the same number. So it's 60, 60, and then 61, 61, 62, 62, and onwards and upwards until we get done. Awesome. So now we have all of our samples made. Uh, and done. And if you're going to use looping samples, make sure that you have the loop playback. I'm just double clicking on that. Set it to sustained. Yeah, because then it's looping back on itself. Okay. Uh, then click on the instrument down here. Go up to the quaver. That's what this note icon is called. And we're going to make another preset. Same thing as the instrument. And we have our sound font made. This is the thing that will allow us to choose it. Click the save icon. Save it to wherever, and we can go back into FL. And if you're using the latest version of FL, which I'm assuming you are if you're using the trial, you can load up the sound font player, click the folder icon, find your sound font, and open it up. And then we're able to play it in the piano roll. And then we can use it in a song. So I'm going to open up a project that I made a little while ago which I made for a chromatic tutorial that would have been much bigger that I decided to can. So I'm going to go down to here, 
Find my sound font. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. If I come up with anything else that I feel like needs to be taught, I will make a video and upload it. Thank you for watching.